Hi, my name is Shriyanka Lahiri, and I'm a strawberry and small fruit crops entomologist working at University of Florida's Gulf Coast Research and Education Center. Today, I'm going to talk about the insect and mite pests typically found in Florida strawberries and how we are managing them. But first, I would like to acknowledge the funding resources that have supported our ongoing research efforts, specifically the Florida Strawberry Growers Association, my colleagues at the Gulf Coast Center, my colleagues at the Department of Entomology and Nematology, our extension agent, Alicia Vidin, our growers, our industry partners who have donated products to continue this research, and funding opportunity from the Specialty Crop Log Grant. Now in this picture, you can see me standing right next to strawberry beds, and these are organic strawberries. This is how strawberries are typically grown in Florida. And we recently managed to get about 10 acres of land certified organic so that we can continue our research to support the organic strawberry production of Florida. Before we move on to management, let's talk a little bit about the typical pests that we see in strawberries in Florida. I'm going to begin talking about the chili trips because this is the primary pest of concern. Chili trips are an invasive trip species from Southeast Asia, and they have been in Florida for a while. They got accidentally introduced on ornamental crops. And since the last five to seven years, they have managed to establish themselves as key pests of strawberries in Florida. Chili trips are unique because they infest the foliage of strawberries along with the fruits and flowers, unlike the other trip species, the Western flower trips. In this picture, pay attention to the trifoliates. Now, these are young trifoliates which is where the chili trips begin their infestation when the plant is in its vegetative state. And we start seeing this type of darkening of the midrib when this pest starts infesting, laying eggs and feeding on the strawberry trifoliates. If unmanaged, this damage continues along the midrib and spreads along the lateral veins. And if left absolutely unmanaged, the leaves start showing curling and necrosis. Needless to say, this plant will not be able to produce any flowers. And if the infestation happens during fruiting stage, the fruits look bronzed and cracked. Now, if we look underneath the calyx with a hand lens, we are most likely to find chili trips larval stages and even Western flower trips larval stages hanging around, hiding underneath the protection of these calyces and feeding. This type of damage is called bronzing and cracking. And both the chili trips adults and larvae use their piercing sucking mouth parts to feed on these various plant tissues and cause significant economic losses. Another pest of concern is the two-spotted spider mite. These pests show up naturally once the strawberry transplants have grown large enough and have produced mid-sized trifoliates. This type of damage that is called stippling is a result of chlorosis in the leaf cells because of the two-spotted spider mite feeding. Let's divert our attention to the two-spotted spider mite female shown in this picture. You see those dark spots on the two sides? Yes, that's why it's called a two-spotted spider mite. Now this adult and its nymphal instars are all feeding stages and they also use their piercing sucking mouth parts to feed on the plant, uh, uh, plant cell. Um, and here you can see that the female has laid fine webbing on which she has glued several eggs. These eggs are smooth and spherical in shape, and that web holds the eggs in position and provides significant refuge 
to the young nymphal stages while they're feeding and provides them protection from predatory, and, uh, predatory insects and mites. If the infestation goes beyond th economic thresholds, you will see webbing developing all along the plants, all along the foliage, and they use this webbing literally like a highway to travel from one plant to another. Another mite species that we typically see on strawberries is the cyclamen mite. Now this mite is a hitchhiker from nurseries. After the strawberries are transplanted, we may see this type of a stunting of young trifoliates because this mite hitchhikes on the crown or the unfolded trifoliates and starts feeding on those plant tissues, causing the stunting of the uh, leaflets. And so here you will see the older leaves have managed to grow to the normal size, but the young developing tissue has remained stunted. This type of damage can be caused from broad mites as well as cyclamen mites, which is why once we get samples like this, we take a closer look into the leaves uh, and the crown, and we look for egg masses and we look for the adult mite itself. Severe infestations on fruits also cause bronzing and cracking, just like the damage seen from thrips feeding. And just like the thrips, these mites tend to hide underneath the calyx. If you take a hand lens and look underneath the calyx, you will find the nymphal stages and also the eggs laid underneath here, well hidden from predators and well hidden from miticide applications. Now this video shows an adult cyclamen mite hatching from an egg. These eggs are spherical. And these eggs are oval in shape, not spherical, unlike the two-spotted spider mite and they are smooth on the surface. Here, you will see that the egg has been glued at the edge of the leaf hair, which is a very smart decision on the part of the mite to avoid predation. As we are aware, there are several predators, natural as well as biological control agents that can potentially feed on best mite eggs. And so you see that this adult mite is tan in color while it's hatching, but will soon turn into a light pinkish to orangish color after its first meal. And its body color more or less depends on the diet that it is accessing. But you see that this mite is somewhat transparent, translucent in color. There are several natural enemies, thankfully, present around the strawberry fields, which can provide consider considerable ecosystem services to suppress these pests. Primarily, we are interested in minute pirate bugs and their nymphs, which are both predatory in nature and are very effective predators of thrips pests. Here on this picture, you can see an adult minute pirate bug hiding underneath the strawberry fruit calyx. And you can see that it's almost as small as the strawberry seed itself. The nymph is also a very voracious predator and both these life stages go about foraging underneath these hidden areas where they know that they will come across the pest species. Other Predatory species that we find around strawberry fields include the multicolored Asian lady beetles, the convergent lady beetles, and lacewing eggs. Here you can see a convergent lady beetle laying a bunch of eggs. And here you can see a bunch of lacewing eggs. Typically, lacewings tend to lay eggs in a bunch where the egg is at the uh, top attached to a fine silken thread. If you see these eggs, 
you know that you have lacewings in your crop and lacewings are generalist predators, just like these lady beetles. So they will not only be feeding on thrips, but they will continue to feed on other pests like aphids, white flies, et cetera, to avoid any secondary pest outbreaks. Another natural enemy to watch out for is the big eyed bug. You can see this bug has really big eyes, which is why it get, gets its common name. And the big eyed bug as well as its nymph are both predatory in nature and they're very effective predators of thrips. So we can already see that there is significant potential in relying on natural control in and around strawberry fields, which is why the decision to spray strawberry fields should not be taken lightly. In order to understand the population distribution and the spatial distribution of the key thrip species and the natural enemies, my PhD student Gagandeep Kaur, with the assistance of my other students, Chastity Perry and Marissa Cassaway, is conducting field research since the last two years. She is sampling four to six strawberry fields on a biweekly basis. And she is utilizing trapping techniques such as the yellow sticky carts and also collecting live plant tissue such as plant, uh, the strawberry fruits and strawberry trifoliates to assess the adult and larval stages of the chili thrips and the Western flower thrips. And also look at the natural enemies I just talked about, such as the minute pirate bug and the big eyed bug, and also the generalist predatory fly species, the long-legged fly. You can see a little one here. These are beautiful flies that are metallic in color and their larval stages are predatory in nature also. So Gagandeep uh, here presents the map of one single field as an example. This field was sampled starting November 2019, which is the time period when strawberries start flowering and fruiting in Florida. And the season goes on through February. So here we can see the data from November 2019 December 2019 and January 2020. The top row of this field shows chili thrips population distribution during these three months. The middle row shows the maps showing Western flower thrips populations during these three months. The bottom row shows the natural enemy distribution during these three months in the same field. And the big, big take home message from these maps is that these natural enemies were present in and around these fields in, during all three sampling uh, times when the thrips were present. And we tended to see hot spots of these natural en enemies around the field edges. So this gives us a lot of hope that these natural enemies are providing ecosystem services. To understand the role of biological control agents, a student in my program visiting from Earth University Costa Rica completed his internship and conducted experiments in the greenhouse on entire strawberry plants to assess the efficacy of predatory mite Amblyseus swirskii seen here in the middle. So Armand released predators, Amblyseia swirskii, on strawberry plants that had a minimum of five trifoliates. And he also treated some other plants with radiant, which is a conventional insecticide, most efficacious for thrips management in strawberries, and a biorational pesticide, Captiva Prime, which is essentially a, a, an uh, oleoresin extract of capsicum. And in this figure on the y-axis, you can see the mean number of chili thrips for three strawberry leaflets. And on the x-axis, the treatments, Captiva Prime, Amblyseus swirskii predator, Radiant, which is a conventional insecticide, 
and the control plots are represented. The gray bars show adult chilitrips numbers and the black bars show the larval chilitrips numbers. So what we found from the study was that seven days after treatment, the adult chili trips populations were significantly suppressed by both Captiva prime and the predator Amlysis verskii. Data was collected through 28 days after treatment, and we saw a continued suppression of the larval stages of chili trips by Amlysis verskii, which was as good as the suppression provided by radiant. So this gave us a lot of hope that biological control agents such as these predatory mites can actually provide effective larval suppression of chili trips in strawberry fields. We are currently witnessing that strawberry growers are releasing predatory mites in the field. Here you can see a farm crew, member of a farm crew of an organic strawberry grower in Florida, hand releasing predatory mites. And this is part of an experiment that we are doing by collaborating with the strawberry grower, where we are releasing three species of biological control agents. So we have the Amblyseus ruskii that we tested in the greenhouse. We are releasing Neoceus cucumeris, which is related to Amblyseus ruskii. It's just better at controlling trip species under colder climates. And we are also releasing predatory mite Phytoceus persimilus, shown on the top here, which is a specialized predator of two spotted spider mites. So, together, these three species of predatory mites show a lot of promise to bolster biological control of mites and thrips in Florida strawberries. And what's even better is that hand releases can be supplemented by drone releases, which kind of takes care of the problem of labor costs. In order to understand the field efficacy of these predatory mites and many more biorational pesticides, my postdoc, Dr. Jonathan O'Hearn, is currently conducting field studies in the organic strawberry field at the Gulf Coast Center. Now, Jonathan is looking at several products, and this figure shows the findings of our pre preliminary studies. The figure uh, shows on the y-axis the chili trips numbers, the mean numbers uh, on the plants, and on the x-axis you can see all the various biorational pesticides that are commercially available that are being tested, and there is a control that we are comparing to all these biorational pesticides. There are various colored bars that show the efficacy of these products. For example, this, the first one, the white bar, shows the chili trips adults on the trifoliates, the strawberry trifoliates, that's the strawberry leaves. The gray colored bar right next to it shows the adults on the strawberry flowers. The bar right next to it, which has a leopard uh, print design, shows the chili trips larvae number count on strawberry trifoliates. And then finally, the fourth bar, which is the black, solid black colored bar, that bar represents the larval counts on the flowers. And so, after we did our data analysis, we found that both the adult and the larval stages were significantly suppressed by a single application of interest when compared to the control plots. And what's more, the larvae showed significant suppression in plots that were treated with the predatory mite Neoceus cucumeris, which is related to Amblyseus verskii. Here you can see the uh, bar that represents the larval stages on the strawberry leaves of chili trips uh, were significantly lower in plots that were treated with the predatory mite, 
when compared to the control plots. Some surprising discoveries were made when we checked the performance of the plots that were treated with the entomopathogenic nematode. There were two species tested. We tested Steiner nemaphil ti and we tested Heterorhabditis bacteriophora. And we were very impressed with the performance of the Feltii species where you saw that the larval chili trips were significantly suppressed both in the leaves and in the flowers when we compared that to the control numbers. And even in the case of Bacteriophora, we saw significant suppression of the larval stages on the trifoliates compared to the control. Some other products that did well were Captiva Prime, where we saw significant suppression of the larvae in flower compared to the control, and Azira. So now we have some products that we can work with in the field. And be mindful that these products were applied only once during the field season. Most of these products have lab labels that instruct to be applied twice within a five to seven day period for effective um, suppression of thrips. And that is exactly what we're investigating currently. Uh, and we will be happy to share results in future presentations. We are also exploring other ways of pest management. Now here, my master's student, Joseph Montemir, is exploring the efficacy of ultraviolet applications, radiations at night. And we are specifically looking at the spectrum C of this radiation, which is high energy. So within less time period, more energy can be delivered to the plants. And so here you can see Joe and Marissa attaching these leaf disks that have two spotted spider mite eggs collected from our lab colony. And they will be attaching leaf disks such as these to these live strawberry plants all along these strawberry fields in the cent at our center. And then after sunset, um, they will let this robot, which is called Thorwald, to apply two different doses of radiation onto the strawberry plots. This bot is capable of moving autonom autonomously and it just follows GPS coordinates, moves silently so there's no noise pollution and leaves no residue behind. So from pre preliminary data analysis, what we are finding is that ultraviolet C spectrum is highly effective in suppressing two spotted spider mite egg hatchability in the field. So let's take a look at this figure. The Y axis represents two spotted spider mite egg hatch percentage, and the X axis shows the two doses that were applied in the field. That is 200 joules per square meter and 350 joules per square meter. And we tested the efficacy of the ultraviolet radiation on two different cultivars of strawberries, namely radiance and brilliance. Uh, and what we find was that, uh, is that the, uh, uh, the 350 joules per square meter is really effective in suppressing egg hatchability. This is significant because ultraviolet radiation can be used in organic strawberry production also. Currently this year, we are repeating this experiment and uh, following the local uh, uh, recommendations, we have replaced the radiance variety with another new variety that's more popular with the growers, uh, which is sensation. So this year we are doing the experiments with plants belonging to sensation and brilliance. Uh, and we will be excited to share the results uh, in following presentations. So we see that there are several natural enemies. In this picture, you can see a hoverfly. This is a fly that looks like a wasp or a bee. Uh, and these flies are predatory in nature. The, their larval stages are predatory in nature. 
uh, that, that will feed on aphids. Uh, so these natural enemies are present around fields and they utilize local uh, pollen and nectar resources such as this Biden's flower that this uh, you know fly is feeding on to gain some energy so that it can fly around looking for more prey items. But it is this ecosystem service that is present around our fields, which we can rely on for uh, uh, avoiding any secondary pest uh, development so that we can get marketable fruit yields, such as this nice looking strawberry. Uh, and uh, there are so several cultural control practices that can protect strawberry growers from unnecessarily applying pesticides. Now, this is a picture that was taken by my predecessor, Dr. Jim Price. And here you can see a little sap beetle feeding on uh, developing strawberry fruit. Uh, there, it's been several years that sap beetles have not posed a threat to strawberry production in Florida solely because of cultural control practices of picking strawberries early so that strawberries do not sit in the field rotting. Just basic field hygiene can avoid um, many pest problems, basically. I wish to thank you all for your attention and would like to summarize the findings from strawberry fields. Uh, mainly what I wanted to point to is that there are several biorational pesticides now that can be used in conventional and organic strawberry production for pests such as thrips and mites. And we have augmentative hand and drone releases of predatory mites as a feasible option now. We are looking at several species of predatory mites for field efficacy, and we are seeing some really promising results. And lastly, a nod to all the natural enemies, such as the minute pirate bugs, the big-eyed bugs, the lady beetles, the lace wings, the hoverflies, the long-legged flies, so on and so forth, that should be preserved and should be given an opportunity to provide natural control um, in order to be economically sustainable and environmentally safe for production of strawberries. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, and I hope that you look forward to follow up uh, of the experimental findings that we find in our field.